Hey, this is Greg McAfee, and welcome to The Greg McAfee Show. Now let's get started. And welcome back to The Greg McAfee Show, where we discuss steps to successful entrepreneurship, how to take your business to new heights, and ultimately follow your dreams. And today we're going to be discussing, can you think your way to success? Now, I know there's going to be some that say, yes, I think, I think you can, you know, positive thinking. I think you can think your way to success. There's also going to be a handful that say, no, it takes a lot of hard work. You got to grind it out and all that stuff. So first, let me ask you a question. If you've ever failed and we've all failed, or if just something has went wrong due to thinking wrong or thinking negative. Has that ever happened? Absolutely, it happens all the time. So why can't it go right by thinking positive? Seeing it, visualizing it, making it happen. Why can't that happen as well? We're gonna talk about that. So can you think your way to success? Would you agree that most everything we do begins with a thought? I think I'll buy a building or I think I'll build a building or, you know, we start visualizing what we look, uh, what we want things to look like. Uh, You know, Walt Disney, when when he passed away, uh, someone said to his wife, too bad Walt couldn't see, you know, Disney World. And his wife said, oh, he's seen it all right. Uh, he's seen everything before it was even built. So he visualized it. He made it happen. And again, I've shared, he built the parking lot first because he visualized how many people would attend Disney World. So thinking is more powerful than we know when we take part in it. You know, for me, in my little world of being a, you know, a heating and air conditioning company in Dayton, Ohio, I have bought into visualizing and thinking and seeing things way before they happened. I'll let, let me give you a couple examples. You know, first of all, when we bought our first ranch, anytime we would do anything to it, we had a, we actually had a, a there was a public or a private swimming pool across the street of this little ranch, and uh, I would pull in that parking lot at night and in the evening when the, when it was closed. And I would sit and look at our house and I would visualize what all we're going to do to it. Um, It was completely run down when we bought it. So we're going to cut this tree down. We're going to put new windows in it. We're going to put a new roof on it. We're going to put new um, uh, gutters on it and awnings and all that kind of stuff that we did to it. Um, And I visualized it. And then, you know, later on, I've mentioned that I've sat at a kitchen table and looked out the back window and visualized building a garage where I was going to run McAfee out of. And then I bought three acres of property and I would drive by, I put a big wood sign out there um, that said future site of McAfee heating and air. I I wanted others to see it. And I would sit, we would sit uh, my wife and I would sit in the on the street and look at the half wooded lot, and I visualized those trees would be gone, and the building would sit here, and there was a retention pond here, and I would visualize it, and I did it, I did it time and time and time again, until you know about a year took to pay off the property, and then we broke ground. I'd visualize. We built a house. Uh, we built a house and I would we would visualize where the house sat on the lot and what the house would look like. We visualized it. We saw it. It happened. Okay? One of the most amazing gifts that God gave us was the human mind. I mean, we haven't we, they, you know, they say we only use a third of it. Some use a lot less than that, right? But we haven't even tapped into everything we can do with the human mind. They said if we just tapped into half of what the mind can do, it would be it would be able to do more than any computer in the world, any robotic uh, type device in the world. Um, the ability to learn, think, choose. Um, and here are some great quotes. I'm not going to mention who said them. They're just great quotes uh, for this topic. Whether you think you can or you can't, you're right. We become what we think about. 
Powerful. I am the greatest. I said that even before I knew I was. Once you replace negative thoughts with positive ones, you'll start having positive results. Wow. Always turn a negative situation into a positive one. And lastly, don't see things as they are. See them as they could be. That's powerful, folks. All those are powerful. We spend, a, we spend time doing busy work. Let's face it. We're, we're constantly, for most of us, we're constantly busy. We're doing, 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 putting out fires, um, but we spend very little time actually thinking. I mean, where you can get away from everything. You can get away from people. You can get away from phones. You can wait, get away from a computer. When I, when I would go into my dream room, which today we call it the uh, idea center, um, I only take, I take my um, business Bible and I sit there for quite a while before I even open it. I sit there, I'm going, I want to calm my spirit. I want to think about, I, I don't want to think about issues or problems or I'm not there for that. I, I want to clear my mind. I want to, I want to clear my mind. So then I'll open up the leadership Bible and I'll, I'll read a few things and it, and it gets my mind stirring about growth or about what I need to change or what I need to do. And it's powerful. And I can, I can be in there in, in, and within two hours, I can't, I just can't believe how fast the time went, but I'm just doing nothing but thinking. That's powerful folks. If you go back and you read anything about Henry Ford, Thomas Edison, Harvey Firestone, you'll see they did the same thing. And uh, when you think, you build thoughts. And these become physical substances in your brain. Dr. Carol Leaf said that. So that's what I'm talking about. When you visualize things, they actually become substance. You, it happens. You visualize it, you visualize it, you see it, you think about it, you dream about it. What makes very successful people different than the rest? Well, first of all, they practice gratitude. And I can't stress how that works. That is just, when you're, when you're thankful for things and you have gratitude, it'll change your life. It'll, it'll change your business. How can you use your resources to help people? You know, Zig Ziglar said, you can get anything you want out of life if you help enough people get what they want. And when we start focusing on other people and get all our thoughts off of us, it's amazing what will happen. And secondly, they believe in their abilities even when they fail. So we're talking about what makes people, what, how do they, successful people, how do they think? What do they do? They believe in their abilities even when they fail. And they, they, they take risks and they push the boundaries. Um, and that can mean failure. We're going to talk more about that. When you do more, you're more likely to fail. How do you handle it? They approach new challenges with the belief that either they'll succeed or take something useful from a potential stumble that will help them do better next time. They realize they're going to take a stumble. They realize there's bumps in the roads. They realize they might fail, but they do it anyway. They get back up, they wipe themselves off, and they go again, and they go again, and they go again, whatever it takes. They continuously set goals. People who've learned to think positively under pressure feel the constant need to accomplish something new. They use goals to mark their progress, keep motivated, and stay on target. They want to know they're on target. Goal setting becomes a way of life, folks. Goal setting becomes a way of life. When I went in for my knee replacement surgery about eight and a half weeks ago or so, uh, I asked my um, surgeon, uh, I said, um, what's the fastest someone's recovered from this? Why was I asking that? Because I wanted to set a goal and I wanted to beat the record, okay? 
Uh, so I was, it was my right leg. I wanted to set the goal in three weeks. And within three weeks, I'd be driving. Two days before the third week, I was driving. Drove to an Ohio State game about an hour away. And uh, I was walking, of course, and all that. And I returned to work. Uh, part-time, but when I figured up the hours, I was still working 40 hours, <laughs> part-time. Anyway, um, so successful people constantly create goals, set goals. Goal setting becomes a way of life. Despite always looking for new challenges, those who succeed at staying positive are always grateful for what they already have. So it's not like we're continuing to search for something uh, to make us happy. It's being grateful for what we have and and then always pushing to a new level. I almost said wanting more, and that's kind of true, but it's not wanting more for more sake. It's just wanting more to continue to improve. Not only that, but we they tend to thank those who have helped them along the way and are, are careful to give credit where credit is due. You know, thank the people that helped you. We're, 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 we're low on the thankful tank nowadays. You know, if you see someone doing well, send them a card, say good job, thank them. Thank them for what they've done in the community. If you've watched a podcast, if you've listened to a podcast, if you attended a class, if you read a book, Send a note to the author. Thanks for writing that book. It's really helped me in this way. Thank people. You'll be surprised what happens in your life when you have more gratitude. Regardless of circumstances or the conditions of upbringing, positive-minded people remain very aware and thankful for the gifts they have been bestowed upon them. Thankful. I'm thankful how I was raised. I'm thankful for having a paper out, a vegetable route. I'm thankful for being, uh, for having a dad who worked hard, missed only a few days in 35 years of work at the same place. I'm thankful for that. It helped me. It inspired me. It made me think different. It helped me in my business. Successful people are also committed to their mentors and their advisors and their coaches. High successful people who stay positive are never satisfied with what they already know. It's it's like the saying, what got you here won't keep you here. It doesn't matter what you already know. It's what you're going to learn tomorrow that matters. And they often attend classes, they read a lot, they listen to audiobooks and podcasts, and they find new ways to hone their existing skills and pick up new skills. And uh, for me, I've, I've just hung around a lot smarter people than what, I'm, what I am. I hang around smarter people than me, let's put it that way. And they also, successful people handle criticism better than others. Anytime you move up the ranks, you will hear flack. You will catch flack from others. Anytime you're moving up the ranks, you may catch flack from families. Let me tell you what flack is. Because back in uh, World War II, Germany had uh, some heavy aircraft. Uh, I'm sorry. They had heavy anti-aircraft. They would shoot from the ground. It was called flack. And they would shoot a projectile into the air. They got very good at shooting it in front of our planes. It would give a little explosion. And then these sharp objects of steel sharp objects would explode out of the projectile. And it would hit our plane. And it could bust the windshield. It could take out an engine. It was called flak. And so they got really good at avoiding flak. It um, also left a black cloud, which helped our pilots be able to see it better. But they, um, the American pilots would say, don't be flak bait. They actually had flak intelligence to teach them how to avoid flak. This is yours. When you're moving up the ranks, 
taking market share, winning races, making more money, you will catch flack. You know, some people call them haters. I never used that term, but I posted something the other day that have you ever seen a hater doing better than you? No, it's always the ones doing less than you that hate you. It's the ones dropping those flak bombs in front of you. They're the ones losing. They don't like you to win. Uh, so you will catch flack. Watch out for it, but don't let it stick to you. Don't let it stick to you. And don't hold a grudge. Just keep winning. Just keep winning. Successful people also challenge the way you think. They're always challenging someone to think different. The most successful people understand their team's areas for improvement, and they use this knowledge and insight to challenge their teams to think, to stretch, to reach more. And these types of leaders and these types of people excel in keeping their people on their toes never allowing them to get comfortable. In the heating and air world, I've always told my team, our job is to keep our customers comfortable. My job is to keep you uncomfortable. You need to keep changing, keep thinking different, keep pushing the limit, improving, making more money. I try to give them the tools to grow. I don't want anybody being stagnant. I don't want any status quo. Status quo, don't it doesn't win races. If you're not thinking, you're not learning new things, folks. If you're not learning, you're not growing. And over time, becoming irrelevant in what you do. That's exactly what happens. Successful people also measure and reward performance. We're performance driven. And... We always have a strong pulse on business performance and those people who are performing champions. Not all team members respond to the sky is the limit here, but the ones who do really excel and they end up making more money than they've ever made in their life. And that's a good thing. I want everyone in my company to make more money than they've ever made in their life. That means we're performing at a very high level. And you get rewarded for extremely well performance. If you're working for a company and you're not making top dollar, it could be because you're not performing at a high level. You'd rather work 40 hours and go home, or you'd rather work 35 hours and go home, or you'd rather just put in your time. Those kinds of people never make more money than they've ever made in their life. They're actually underpaid because that's all they're worth. It's sad. I, it saddens me. It really does. It saddens me. You perform our goals, you get rewarded extremely well. You, per you perform above our goals, the sky's the limit. All right. They also provide continuous feedback, and I, and I love feedback. Uh, I, I use Firestone as an example all the time, but Harvey Firestone, the founder, came up with uh, cash for suggestions. You know, back in the day, they gave away pencils, and on the pencil, it said the Firestone logo. On the other side of the pencil, it said, we pay cash for suggestions. We want feedback. We want to know what we're doing good. We want to know what we're doing bad. We want to know what we can change. And employees want their leaders to know what they're paying attention to. Successful leaders always provide feedback and they welcome feedback from others. And that creates trustworthy relationships among the team. Okay. Jumping over to the Bible, in Romans 12, it says, Do not copy the behavior and the customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Changing the way you think. 
change your perspective, which changes how you act. Paul wrote those words, and they're not new words. Paul wrote them hundreds of years ago. Change your mind is the central theme of Jesus' first sermon in the book of Matthew. Change your mind. Change the way you think. Think differently. It can only get better from here. Think differently. Changing the way you think changes your perspective. Jesus challenged people to change their thinking, and he still does today. Through his word, the Bible, through devotionals with others, or with by, or by yourself, you do a devotional, you read a devotional, it challenges you. You can do them with a group. You can do them Bible studies with a group. Many different ways, but Jesus' main theme, change your mind. Draw closer to me. Wrapping it up here, if we're not thinking, we're not learning new things. And I'm going to give you six, I'm going to give you six quick things that will change when you start changing your thinking. Got this from John Maxwell. Read almost every book he's written. I'm behind a little bit. A couple, couple of his latest ones I have not read yet, but I've read all the way back to, I think his first book was called uh, The Way We Think. So uh, it's, we need, we need to change our thinking. If we're not learning, we're not growing, and over time becoming irrelevant in what we do. I don't want to become irrelevant, okay? So here's what I suggest. Motivating. I've read this over and over. I've taught on this whole series. Six steps. Are you ready? And then we're done. Six steps and we're done. When you change your thinking, you change your beliefs. When you change your beliefs, you change your expectations. When you change your expectations, you change your attitude. When you change your attitude, you change your behavior. When you change your behavior, you change your performance. And when you change your performance, you change your life. And that's good news. It all started with changing your thinking. You want a new life? Change your thinking. You want a different behavior? Change your thinking. You want a better attitude? Change your thinking. Powerful, folks. Powerful. I try to live by it. Sure, I missed the mark many times, but I try to live by that. Thanks for listening. So before we wrap up, if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe below. You can also support this podcast by rating and reviewing on iTunes or your favorite preferred listening platform. Keep listening because I'm just here to challenge you, make you better, and help you sleep better at night. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram. And Facebook at The Greg McAfee Show. No spaces, no underscores. Be sure to tune in next week as we continue to discuss business topics uh, to make your business stronger, to make you a better person and everything else. And thanks for listening. As always, carry on and have a great day.